Okay, so Eel Tail Alley is an awful map. Like, it, it, it's really bad. But it didn't have to be this way. It's basically common knowledge at this point that when it was initially shown off in the Return of the Millions trailer over two years ago, wow, okay, it looked entirely different from what we have today. This has been mostly consistent for every Splatoon game's token map, such as the Reef and Urchin Underpass, which all changed a lot from beta to launch. The only difference between Eel Tail and those is that they actually improved when we first saw them. While Eel Tail went from a very promising looking map to one of the absolute worst in the game, leaving many people including myself fascinated with the singular trailer and imagining what could have been, and could still be in the possible future. Yeah, I never had any doubts we'd eventually get map reworks, but I had no idea where to start this early. We have hope, guys. You see, I've tackled redesigning this map before when I was working on the map reworks project with a certain YouTuber you may have heard of, but back then the goal was more to keep it relatively tame and not make too big of changes from what already exists. I still like the changes we made, of course, but looking back to beta eel tail along with taking some inspiration from the tricolor layout, I feel like I could do much better to ramp up the stage five tiers higher on the tier list and turn it into the fan favorite it truly deserves to be. Joining me today is Levi Taylor, a really talented person who this video could not have been done without, since they were kind and awesome enough to go ahead and make a full 3D model of my layout. Hello everybody, I'm Levi Taylor, also known as 45. I'm a competitive natured Splatoon player and a 3D modeler certified in Autodesk Inventor. I made the 3D model you'll be seeing today, and Biopedal Squid has invited me to join them as they walk y'all through the newly updated version of this stage. Also, short disclaimer, if I sound a bit rough right now, I am coming over a bit of a small cold. Show them some support by following their Twitter, which is linked in the description. They truly deserve it. Thank you for having me, and I appreciate the shout out. Plus, who knows, maybe Nintendo will get something out of this video and put in some of the changes you've outlined if it gets a rework. That would be the dream, wouldn't it? Without further ado, let's lay our eyes on the new and improved Eel Tail Alley. This layout was still taken from Vanilla Eel Tail, as opposed to being just based on or copied from the beta version from the ground up, as I wanted to emulate what the stage could look like once construction was complete down the line, and have this video be more than just, bring back old Eel Tail. Basically, it's a mix of the beta layout with the current, plus a few other ideas mixed in, of course. I think the most immediate and obvious changes are all in mid, which is, for the most part, inspired by the beta, most apparent by the shape. Obviously, it's wider along with the rest of the stage, which by default makes it less cramped and more open for teams to spread out. But more importantly, a massive amount of movement options have been added, which is what the stage desperately needs. First, all of these walls are now paintable, allowing access out of mid from both the left and right sides of the map instead of just the single choke in the center. Even just this by itself would make a huge difference. You'll also notice these two tall blocks, which allow jumps to not only the bridge, but this grate as well from the low ground. These are of course simplified inspirations from the structures featured in the tricolor layout, which I really like the inclusion of. You see, I always hated how in the real Eel Tail the token bridge isn't even intact in any of the ranked modes, being completely absent in zones and tower, and turned into this weird drop in the middle of rain and clams. I think this, however, is the coolest and most elegant solution to add ways up without compromising the identity of the bridge. Like in Splatoon 2, the reef didn't require the bridge to drop in the ranked modes, they just allowed waves to access it from below. Like, this is just silly. I really think if absolutely anything seen in this rework is added later on the line, it's this. Like how the car sticks on Mincemeat were added later after debuting in the tricolor layout. Other changes to mid include the sides once again protrude out towards the street, opening up the space even farther. The speed bumps were also brought back as they were a unique bit of varied terrain that also acted as slight cover. The traffic barrier was extended to be made much longer, and lastly the little red and white barrier thing was brought back once again for all modes rather than just being in zones for some reason with additional separated ones placed here at the ends of the main walls for additional cover, since mid would probably be a little too open otherwise. Well, that's about it for mid, which I think would be absolutely amazing to play in now, but as you can probably tell, there's a lot more changes outside of it to talk about. Eel Tail is one of, if not the most snowbally maps in the game, with almost no advantageous positions for defenders to take. The main issue is how the overall terrain is much more in favor of the attackers by just giving them a lot more high ground to work with. Getting control of the bridge can completely lock out the opposing team. Not to mention the best defensive spot on the left here can be easily accessed by attackers with no other areas for defenders to oppose it. Thankfully, now with construction complete, there's a lot more high ground to work with, with this second rooftop added in place of what used to just be a grate and nothing else. 
Both roofs now have a second layer like in the beta and in real life Japanese architecture, which gives extra cover, a way to move around them, and overall just looks cooler. With that, and the addition of this entire chunk of high up terrain added here, the left side of the map is now a valid defensive option, and along with the overall wider space, allows for an abundance of more options for defenders to actually, you know, defend. This wall climb is still possible for attackers to take, however now with the addition of the rooftop and high ground guarding it, it's much riskier and isn't nearly as advantageous a position as it once was. Whoa guys, actual balance, holy sh**. This wall, however, will still require a sponge. To make sure any attackers trying to flank, say a backline from behind, needs to travel much farther since they could just climb this wall right in front of them now anyway. There still is such a thing as too much freedom after all. And to allow access for defenders back up to the roof, there's a tall sponge next to the phone booth's new location, which is no longer awkwardly buried in the terrain and doesn't contain a fire hydrant anymore. Yes, this is real. I'm not kidding. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, despite this one being Pretty funny. this is yet another mark in favor of the AI map designer allegations. Looking at the right side, there's now yet another defensive sponge under the building to allow defenders to back up more easily without needing to take this uninkable glass hallway. And a grate was added back here for midliners to be able to peek said hallway more easily from the high ground. Also, this ramp that was added in the polls update was removed. Last but not least, this ramp will return once again in all modes. Though I guess a sponge there could also work as well to at least allow defenders to retreat. Though, I think with the amount of new defensive options, it's fair to allow attackers access to this area if they're able to squeeze by. Also, I just wanted to point out that with the inclusion of this rooftop, you can actually now back up to this tall power line thing that only used to be accessible when spawn jumping in. So that's neat, even if it isn't super particularly practical, but it's cool. The final thing to go over, of course, is how the ranked objectives will work and or change with the new layout. The zone would stay the exact same, since the only problem with the mode before was how lockout heavy and cramped mid was, along with limited ways in and out. The clan basket will be moved just a little bit back to behind the dumpster in this corner, since being able to score from the bridge was stupidly broken. Raymaker has always been Eeltail's best mode, and I don't think the checkpoint positions need to change all that much. The only thing that really needs to be addressed here is that the Raymaker will spawn on top of the bridge now. Tower control is the most interesting one, however, and I'll explain why. You see, in order for the tower to actually be able to pass under the bridge to leave mid, the devs opted just to remove this entire chunk of terrain, which just makes the map even worse than it already is. It's funny though, because there's such an easy solution to this already designed into the game, and that's just the short tower, which is used in some maps where it passes under low overhangs. Problem solved. The other issue is the path, which once attackers make it here, it's basically game over with the high ground advantage the tower gets. Here's the new route I came up with, where the now shortened tower will start under the bridge, where the path will continue as normal until it reaches this point, where it will now continue through the low ground on the opposing side as before. This allows for a much more dynamic defensive phase, where defenders can now rotate around this side of the map, not to mention the tower now staying low and therefore easier to pressure. Well, what do you think? Personally, I'm very proud of this layout, and the model leave I made for it is amazing, and really brings to life what would otherwise be a simple 2D concept. Once again, thank you so much for being a part of this. I really appreciate your work, and this wouldn't have been possible without you. Once again, I thank you for having me. I actually had a blast making this model and working back and forward with you. Turning the 2D map into a full-scale redesign was a good challenge for my skills. And my hardware. My computer did not like me with this one. Anyways, I'm glad you were happy with how it turned out, and everyone watching, I hope you enjoyed seeing it too. If you'd like to ask about anything, or even possibly request a 3D model, my Twitter will be in the description below as mentioned before. That's all from me today though. Have a good rest of your day, everybody. Thanks for watching! Make sure to like and subscribe to see more content like this. You could also join the channel to access exclusive polls, previews to upcoming projects and videos, member shoutouts, and priority replies to comments. My current streaming schedule is on Fridays at 2pt and Sundays at 12pm pt. Take care everyone!